Okay, hey, it's uh, Jason with RPC Electronics and uh, Lesson 9. First things first, I want to thank everyone who's uh, sent me a bunch of great messages and emails um, telling me that the tutorials have been a lot of help. That's great. I'm really glad to hear that considering that I do put a little bit of time in this, not a whole lot, but I do put some time into it and it's nice to know that it's actually paying off and actually benefiting people. If it wasn't, then I probably wouldn't. Probably wouldn't put as much time into it as I have. So for that, thank you. Thank you very much to, for all the nice things everyone said. Okay, let's uh, let's jump into lesson nine here. Um, gonna try to keep this one a little bit shorter. Um, what we're gonna do, uh, just to recap lesson eight real quick, we ran some manual traces as you can see. Um, if you are following along from lesson eight, you just got done uh, seeing me do that. So I'm not going to go into any major details. At this point, we're pretty much ready to go ahead and run the auto router. So let's go ahead and run the auto router on the air wires that we have left. Pretty much all the air wires left are not really crucial. Uh, most of them include um, tying grounds and some non-crucial lines like uh, this air wire from the LED to the output of the regular air and that sort of thing. So first thing I like to do, and this is just the way it works best for me, is I will switch over to... Uh, the mill grid and I will make this a 7 mil grid. Um, the main reason I do this is that most of the board houses I deal with uh, it seems that they prefer to have at least 7 mil spacing uh, minimum. So I tend to do that just to make it easier. Okay and if we go down here to the uh, menu on the left we'll see that we have a uh, button called auto so go ahead and click that and it's going to bring up this window here basically for the most part leave everything as, as the way it is unless you have any kind of spe special uh, requirements most people are not going to need to change this one of the things you would want to change is the routing grid and, change, and I change that to 7 mil so it matches my grid that I have selected and once I have that selected I'm not going to change anything else all we have to do is uh, click OK to run the auto router now since we only have a couple to run it's going to run very quickly and um, it's going to happen so fast that you're almost not going to see it keep in mind that if you do have different auto router setups that you use for different projects you can save them and load them later so you can recall those settings later on if you do indeed want to run uh, different types of auto router setups for different projects. Myself, I tend to stay with the default because it just it works pretty well for me. All right, here we go. I'm gonna click OK and it's gonna run the auto router. So watch closely. Okay, uh, it's, it's it's done already. And you'll notice down here in the left, it'll say optimize for. The thing to understand about the auto router is, is the very first time it routes, it's going to just simply try to run a trace between the points that the air route, the air wires were connected to. It's just simply getting a trace down on the board. It may not make sense to you as you're watching it. It may look like it's going really the long way around to actually get to where it needs to be. That's where optimization comes in. There's four optimization levels that come in and actually analyze where the original auto router traces were placed. Once it decides that those traces are either uh, adequate or not adequate, it's going to either try to move them around to do a little bit better job, or it's just going to stop and say that's good enough and it leaves it there. In this case, uh, if you noticed, the traces flipped around a couple of times. That was the optimization taking place. The auto router simply got the traces put down, and then the auto, and then um, the optimization took over and optimized the traces for the shortest routes, and in general for the most logical routing. And in this simple board, obviously we could have hand routed this entire board, but I wanted to make sure I showed you how the auto routing procedure worked. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. You can see how the auto router ran traces between. These, these two caps and tied it to ground as, as well as trace, uh, traces were ran around this capacitor to the connector and also ran to the uh, ground side of the uh, current limiting resistor for the LED. So pretty much uh, the auto router is done what it's supposed to do 
and now we're ready to uh, run a ground plane and this is something I've gotten a lot of questions on so I'm going to try to simplify it as much as possible. For starters we're going to go over here to the polygon that's if you look on the left side there's a rectangle and there's a square with it looks like a little mouse bite has been uh, bit out of the corner so we're going to bring up the polygon and up top here you'll notice we've got a whole bunch of new tools that are new buttons that just came up I'm going to start by clicking the top layer now that means that this polygon that we're going to lay down and a polygon is simply a shape a multi-sided shape at least um, at least three sides or more and depending on the layer that's selected that's the layer that that polygon is going to be laid on um, I'm gonna go down to the thinnest width that is available and that is 10 mils remember we're still working on the 7 mil grid the other thing that you need to make sure to select is this right here it's where the uh, ground plane is going to make is going to put a gap between anything that is not ground so we're going to click on that and as you notice this says this is actually on or off and this is on you want that on the next thing that's most important is isolation I'm going to select 12 mils isolation is the spacing between the ground and any pad that is not ground it's going to isolate it's going to put a gap between that pad and ground so in this case I use 12 mils that seems to be a pretty good um, pretty solid uh, uh, distance to use as well as uh, it's not too far and it's not too close sometimes when it's too close and your solder mask is not perfect it's very easy to bridge so I try to give it a, a good enough isolation okay enough talking let's get going so what we're going to do is is we're going to start where we want to start our polygon and in this case we want to make the entire board ground plane on the top and the bottom so we're going to start in the top left corner we're going to click once now you'll notice I've got a, what looks like an auto router tray or a, a hand route trace what we're going to do is we're going to start lining this along the edges of the board so in this case I was able to click the top left corner and then the bottom right corner now I'm going to zoom back in on the top left corner and I'm going to click exactly where I started now you notice we've got this dotted line come over here and click your naming tool and you're going to click on that and now you'll notice this highlighted and we're going to change this to GND for ground you'll see why we're going to do that in a second but before we do that let's pull our poly our uh, polygon tool again and this time let's select the bottom layer now we're gonna click and we're gonna do the exact same thing all over again click and click and this time the blue is really hard to see but we're going to click and the blue is selected and we're gonna do the exact same thing we're gonna click ground or type in ground GND now I'm gonna go back to a full screen and now we're going to hit our rat's nest tool. You remember that tool from when we used it to shorten all of our air wires to their absolute shortest runs. In this case, the rat's nest tool is what's going to fill in our polygon. So let's click it. And there we go. Now we have a full polygon ground plane on both, or copper pour as we sometimes call it, on the top and the bottom. If I go in and I actually turn off the top layer, you can now see the bottom layer and vice versa I can turn off the bottom and turn on the top and you can see the top so let me go ahead and turn both layers on and we'll go ahead and stop there and uh, we'll pick it up in less than 10 thanks a lot